So the GTX 1660 Ti released a couple of weeks ago and we keep learning that it's actually a really solid card for the money. For $280 you're getting GTX 1070 performance and we pretty much know everything about this card at this point. Except, how is it performing in a budget OEM desktop like this Dell Optiplex? Let's get into it. Hey, welcome to Zach's Tech Turf. Today we're going to be benchmarking the brand new 1660 Ti and Adele Optiplex to see if this combination makes any sense or if it's just going to be a bottlenecking nightmare. And if you're new here and you want to see more benchmarking or PC building videos, then hit that subscribe button down below and also that notification bell. That way you never miss an episode. But before we get into it, let me quickly introduce the sponsor of today's video, Dev Mountain. Dev Mountain is a 13 week class for all of you aspiring iOS and web developers out there. The 13 week class focuses on providing you only the skills that you actually need to go out there and start your new career in coding, they don't waste time with the filler curriculum like at a traditional college. They also feature student housing at no extra cost, a variety of different classes including UX design and QA testing, and most importantly all of this is available at an affordable price. Head on down to that first link in the description to learn more if you're interested in getting that quick boost you need to start your new career in coding and design. Alright so for today's video I have two main questions that I want answered and I have a feeling that you guys are thinking the exact same thing. First, will a Dell Optiplex bottleneck a $280 GTX 1660 Ti? And second, does this combination make any sense at all? In order to answer these, it'll definitely come down to which specific Optiplex or OEM desktop that you go with, so let's take a look at mine for this video. You guys have probably already seen this before, but this Dell Optiplex 9010 is rocking an Intel i5-3570 clocked at 3.8 GHz, 16 GB of DDR3 RAM, an EVGA 450 watt power supply that I always recommend you guys upgrade in these OEMs, and I have all of the games in installed on an ADATA 500GB SSD. The Intel i5-3570 is actually certainly capable of gaming here in 2019 despite its cheap price. I paid $100 for this entire thing minus the SSD and the power supply, but please just be aware of what OEM you're buying because these are not all the same. The reason why I say this is because I don't want some of you new builders going out there and buying a $280 graphics card and pairing it with a Dell Optiplex that's rocking something like a Celeron processor. That would obviously be a nightmare. And another thing before getting into the benchmarks, I just want to make it very clear that I'm not necessarily saying that this is a good combination with the 1660 Ti and a Dell Optiplex. Sure, you can put some mighty GPUs in a Dell Optiplex like a GTX 1060, but before we put in a $280 graphics card, we definitely need to do our homework. I'm also going to be only testing these games in 1080p. If you want to see how the 1660 Ti performs in 1440p, then make sure you check out the video in the top right hand corner. I feel like someone that's actually interested in one of these OEM builds isn't going to want to spend the money on a 1440p monitor, so that's my reasoning for that. With all that out of the way, the first game up was none other than Apex Legends. We'll get into the more demanding games towards the end, and here here in 1080p with high settings and TSAA turned on, I got a pretty solid average of 97 FPS. Keep your eye in the top left hand corner for MSI Afterburner for the rest of these benchmarks. As you can tell, Apex Legends had a pretty decent balance in terms of CPU and GPU load. The next game up was Fortnite and in 1080p and high settings I averaged an impressive 130 frames per second, but those 1% and 0.1% lows were just awful. For this one, you can clearly see that the CPU is at 100% almost the entire time, so that's causing the super low spikes in FPS, and this simply means that the CPU GPU is giving out way before the GPU does, aka being bottlenecked. Next up was PlayerUnknown's Battlegrounds, and here in 1080p with high settings, we have pretty much the exact same thing as Fortnite, a really good average FPS, but the lows were just terrible. Keep in mind that if you cap these games at 60 FPS, which I definitely recommend you do, you'll get way smoother and more consistent results, but I can't really do that with these benchmarking videos. Counter-Strike Global Offensive was up next, and in 1080p and high settings, I averaged 124 frames per second, and the lows actually weren't that bad. I was pretty surprised by the CPU. CPU and the GPU load during this game because we all know that CSGO relies more on the CPU, but this was actually somewhat balanced at least in 1080p. Following that, I tested Rainbow Six Siege and in 1080p in high settings I averaged 155 frames per second and that 0.1% low was an impressive 60 FPS. With the built-in benchmarking tool, as you can see in the top left hand corner, we were definitely bound by the CPU yet again. Getting into the tougher to run games, I fired up Battlefield 5 and in 1080p in high settings I averaged 94 frames per second. As you can see here, even though the game did indeed look beautiful, 
beautiful, the CPU was pretty much locked at 100% load the entire time. Next up was Assassin's Creed Odyssey. This one we know is super CPU dependent, and in 1080p and high settings, I only managed to average 43 frames per second. Just like Battlefield 5, as you can see here, the CPU was almost locked at max load the entire time, while the GPU only ever got to 50 to 60%. And finally, the Far Cry New Dawn built-in benchmarking tool was up next. Make sure you check out my dedicated benchmarking video on this one if you haven't already. And here in 1080p and high settings, the Dell Optiplex averaged 71 FPS. This one wasn't as bad as Odyssey. The CPU was at 100% while the GPU was around 70 to 80, but still, this was definitely bottlenecked by the CPU. All right, so before you guys go, I usually end my benchmarking videos right after that last game. I wanna quickly talk about what we were actually seeing with these results. Without a doubt, the GTX 1660 Ti is too much for the Dell Optiplex to handle, at least one with a 3570 in it like mine. And if you remember that this is equivalent performance to a GTX 1070, then this really does make sense. Even a year ago, I was saying that the most beefy GPU that you should ever put in one of these budget OEM desktops is a GTX 1060, and that still remains true today. The 1660 Ti will perform better in most games with it, but you're still definitely restricting anything over a 1060, especially with CPU demanding titles. Overall, I am glad that I did this testing for myself and I've seen it with my own eyes now. I can now confidently say that you shouldn't put a heavy duty card like this with an OEM desktop, and you really shouldn't put anything past a 1060 in there. Well, there you have it. That wraps up my 1660 Ti in a Dell Optiplex video. As always, feel free to drop a comment down below about what card you have in your OEM desktop or what you think about the 1660 Ti in here. After that, feel free to head on over to one of these two videos if you haven't seen them yet and definitely hit that subscribe button because later this week, we have some more benchmarking to do. You don't want to miss that video.